Hey guys, it is Travis Mortz with the Forest Hill Film Lab, and uh, you know I was just down in the dark room filming a video about developing your own color film, and uh, I figured while I was down here on this rainy day, I would uh, fire out uh, another video that you know I I really don't know how I've never thought about making this because it's so important and. I seem to have talked about every single thing else about photography's fundamentals, but I've never di dove into this subject. And so today I'm going to explain to you guys how a camera works. Um, for me personally, I'm the kind of person that needs to know how something works before I can fully understand what the hell I'm doing. So, um, you know, a, a good analogy would be like a, an engine, you know, once you understand how an engine works, it's going to be a whole lot easier to fix that engine when it's not working, right? It's a, once you understand spark and combustion and all those things, then you're well on your way to figuring out a problem and solving that problem. So for me, when I was going to school, you know, before going to school, I had a camera and I was shooting it. It was like an Aperture Priority Nikon EM. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But I was getting photos, so that was cool. So I, I thought that I was doing it right. But once I went to school and really understood exactly how this machine operates, uh, that's when I truly fell in love with photography. And that's when I really decided, or really uh, was able to figure out the problem solving that I needed to make the images that I wanted to make. So um, I'm kind of just going to go through this camera and just show you like, just all the little bits about it, so for you guys out there that you know, hasn't had this explained to you, maybe one thing in this video will be enlightening, or maybe a couple things will be enlightening. Um, I've chosen the Nikon F because this is a very simple, straightforward camera. Um, it's a shutter speed, it's an aperture, and that's about it. And that's all you need to make uh, images. So I'm going to explain to you how these things operate, and hopefully it'll make you... Um, more knowledgeable in the future when you're trying to make images, you'll have a better understanding of what the hell's going on inside this uh, amazing machine that we've got in front of us. So let's get started. So my personal story is I started with a shitty Aperture Priority camera. For high school graduation, I got a digital and I started really figuring out photography because I had this screen to look at and I really felt like I knew what the hell I was doing. Um, but then once I went to school, I had my teacher really break down how the device works uh, using a 35 millimeter camera like this one, just something very simple. And that's when I realized how little I knew. So um, on the first day of class, he wrote on the board, it takes three things to make an image. You need an aperture, you need a shutter speed, and you need some film. So, um, you know, simple enough, but there's more to it than that. You know, those are the settings. Those are the things that I've talked about in my past videos, explaining depth of field, explaining shutter speed, um, explaining Sunny 16 rule. That's all fine and good. But the thing that I really was, uh, you know, intrigued by was when I figured out how this camera was actually working. And uh, that's when I really started to understand photography and how to make the images I wanted. So the first thing, like the first thing I'm going to dive into, it's the thing that I, I never knew. And once I learned it, I felt so stupid for not knowing it. Um, so the way that this lens works is that it's always open to its small or to its largest aperture all the time. Even when I stop my shutters or my aperture down, even when I change this setting, nothing changes about my viewfinder. And I never really understood why until it was explained to me. So um, the way that your camera works is that it always is going to be the largest aperture. And the reason for that is so you can see your subject. So you can focus on things even though it might be dark in here. Uh, the only way you're going to be able to do that is by you're letting the most amount of light in. But the part that I never knew was when you take the picture, in that split second of time, the camera closes the aperture's lens down, the lens's aperture down to your desired setting. Um, so what you see is not always what you get. So here I am focusing on flowers, focusing on everything and having a buttery soft background. And oh man, I love that shit. And that's the photo I want. And then I take the picture and it wouldn't be. 
it wouldn't be that same way. And I never really could get my head around it. Why not? Just a second ago, that flower was so sharp and the background was so soft. Yet when I take the photo, I look at my digital screen and it's different. Why is that? Well, that's because when your camera takes the photo, when it actually uh, sh closes the shutter, that aperture closes to the desired setting. And like I explained in my depth of field video, different apertures create different depth of field. It's going to make a different image. So the one thing that I was really intrigued by these cameras is, oh, wow. So my settings actually go into effect when I press the button and not when I change the setting, just like our shutter speed here. So, you know, I've got a 1.2 lens here. Everything's buttery soft all the damn time. But that's not so. That's not what our photo is going to be. Our photo is going to be our desired aperture, what we have it set to. So I don't know if you guys could tell. You probably can't. But when I take the picture here, this aperture will close down. I got it on bulb mode right now. This aperture will close down and it will actually hold in that setting. And when I let go, it opens back up to the largest aperture. And, oh, I'm looking at the world through clear eyes again. And I'm focusing on every little thing and the background soft and all that good stuff. But what needs to be understood is that when we press our shutter, that's when the effects go, that's when the settings go into effect. That's when the camera does its job and says, okay, I hear the settings that you're asking for. Press that button down and I'll give them to you. Um, so that's the, the number one thing that I was really intrigued by. And you can actually see right here, there's a little bit of a lever. And when you take the picture, that lever moves up. And what it does is it actually moves the, le the lever on the lens and it will change it to whatever our desired aperture is. So here it's always wide open. We take the picture and it closes down. We take the picture, closes down. And then right when you right when the photo's done being taken, it's back open again and we're looking at the world through clear eyes. So for me, that was enlightening. That has to be explained to you um, because your eyes are not, it's not always what you see. You don't get to see that happening when you're taking the picture. You don't get to see the lens closed down. The reason you don't get to see the lens closed down is because there's a mirror in here. And so this mirror is reflecting our light through the lens. It's going to hit this top prism here and it switches the image all over the place. Truly, when you're taking the picture, that photo is coming in upside down and backwards. It's hitting your film that way. But this mirror and this prism system is put in place so we can see our image the way that we are used to seeing, right side up and left to right um, correct. Um, what, what else is happening when that mirror goes up? That's a good question. That's what we want to know. Well, back here, we've got a shutter. For this camera, it is a side-to-side -side actuating shutter. So here we've got it on bulb mode. So as you can see, this is a curtain. Our, we've got two curtains in every camera. One goes and the other one follows. So when we have it on bulb mode, one goes. And when we let go, the other one follows. It transfers side to side across the camera. When we have a faster shutter speed, those, those curtains chase each other a little bit closer. Let's see here. Okay. Still, the first curtain still fully opens, and then the second one follows a quarter of a second later. But that's not the case when we're shooting at like a thousandth of a second. Now, that curtain is so fast. And what's actually happening is, the first curtain goes, and the second curtain follows so closely behind it, that it's only exposing the film for a fraction of a second, and that's how you get uh, your stop action. Because if, if you think about the amount of time that your film is being exposed to light, it's a fraction of a second, and it's only going to be able to expose what's going on in that amount of time. Um, I kind of, I always use this analogy. If you close your eyes and you're moving your head around, and you open it really quick and close them again, you still only saw a fraction of a second. Even though your head was moving, you didn't see any motion. You only saw the camera that, that I'm looking at, or you only saw your friend doing a jumping jack. And if you open your eyes for a while, you take all of that in. So the way our shutter works is just like that. The faster the shutter speed, the faster the curtain is chasing the second, the first curtain is being chased by the second curtain. And so here we got 30th of a second. Okay, you can kind of see that one a little bit better. 
they're chasing each other. And so our shutter speed is just that. It's a curtain that's allowing the camera to open and then the second curtain is going to close the camera. Um, and that's why, you know, whenever you look through your camera and you see a bunch of dirt and shit in there, you're like, oh man, my, my viewfinder's so dirty. I, I don't want my pictures to be messed up. They won't be. Because all that dirt's on your mirror, all that dirt's in your prism, and all that stuff really has nothing to do with the photo. That all that shit gets out of the way when you take the picture. That mirror flips up, that curtain opens, and it, all you're looking at is what's coming through your lens, just like so. Um, we've got our self timer here. That's pretty self explanatory. Um, you know, really the, the most the most important points are exactly that: the lens, the aperture, and the shutter, how they all work. Um, this camera, this particular camera, has a mirror lockup setting. Let's see if I can get it to go. There we go. It's locked up. And so now that's just the shutter actuating, doing its job as I ask it to. This is bulb mode. Um, the thing about bulb mode is that it, it gives you manual control of your shutter. So you get to decide when the curtains chase each other. I want the first curtain to go. When I let go, I want the second curtain to go. Once you set your shutter speeds, the camera automatically decides, okay, I'll take care of this. You press the button and I'll let them go when they need to go. So you press the button, first one goes, second one goes. And you know, this is a hard thing to illustrate, but it's not just, it's not just a thing opening back there. They are two curtains, one after the other. And some cameras are different, like your, your Hasselblads and your medium format cameras, they have a leaf shutter. It is a bunch of blades that open and then close. Um, that is not a shutter curtain. It's it's a different uh, you know it's a different system, but just the same. When the camera takes the image, it stops the lens down to your desired aperture, and therefore um, you know gives you the settings that you're asking for and exposes your film correctly. Um, we've got our you know film our film rewind here. A lot of cameras have a release button on the bottom. This camera in particular has this release collar on the top. What that does is it allows this, um, this spool here to spin freely. And by doing that, you can rewind your film as you please. When that is not done, we'll see here, let's see. When you load your film normally, this spool doesn't spin backwards. So a lot of people make the mistake when they should shoot their first roll of film, they just go to rewind it and this spool is not disengaged. So when you're pressing that button on the bottom of your camera, that's exactly what you're doing is you're letting this spool spin freely, allowing you to rewind your film. Here we go again. Okay, now that guy's spinning freely, we can rewind our film, so on and so forth. Um, you know. This, this video doesn't have to be very long. It's, these cameras are super simple, but um, you know that, that aperture thing and how the shutter works, these are all things that I wanted to explain to you guys. Um, and you know that's, that's pretty much it. This, uh, this camera is super straightforward. And like I've taught you in the past about um, getting your settings right, that's really all you gotta worry about. But understanding, what the hell is this doing? Understanding how the shutter works is, and understanding how the aperture works is super important. Here we go. Damn, my camera was being weird as hell for a second. When I had it in that rewind mode, I was, I was actuating the camera and the mirror was flapping. That was kind of funny, but anyways, here we got one second. Our thing's gonna open and close. And when I put this lens back on, we could illustrate exactly what I was talking about. It's gonna open. Our aperture is going to be closed, and then the camera will close back up again. So, um, you know, this is just a quick little video I wanted to do. Since I was down here, since I was already talking to the camera, I figured I would fire out a nice little easy one. Um, just explaining to you exactly how these things work. And this is how every camera works. This is how your digital camera works. This is how your Hasselblads and your Rollies work. Uh, well, actually, the Rolly is a little different, but um, we'll get into that in another video. But for your simple 35 millimeter camera, that's how it operates. Your lens is always wide open. When you take the, the photo, the lens closes down, the shutter opens up, 
and once that shutter closes, it goes all back to normal and you're none the wiser. So um, hopefully this video you know, helps you guys understand your camera a little bit more. And in those situations when you're trying to make the photo exactly the way you want it, um, these little details will help you understand exactly what's going on inside there. So um, hopefully this wasn't too rushed through. I can't really think of anything else I need to talk about. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, keep on shooting.